everybody, it's Mike Michalko. I am the author of The Drumming System. And today I want to talk about the five most important beginner drumming techniques. And uh, this comes from, you know, brand new students coming in saying, where do I start? What do I got to do? And uh, so let me tell you, okay? The first thing, and believe it or not, is the most important part about drumming, is how to properly hold the drumstick. Um, I've mentioned before in some of my other DVDs that I held the sticks wrong for about 10 years, and I don't want to see anybody ever do that, because doing something wrong for 10 years is just not a good thing. So let's get started right off the bat with how to hold the stick properly. So I'll break this down as quick as I can. I'm just going to sit on that one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to put the stick down, okay? I'm going to take my hand, put it out like I'm going to shake somebody's hand, okay? I'm going to make a gun with it, point it at you. Don't worry, it's not loaded. Okay, now from my wrist, I'm going to turn it to my left. Now I'm going to lay the gun barrel down just above the pad, okay? Now I'm going to take my stick. Now in the first joint of my finger, man, I need some hand cream. These, uh, these fingers are pretty dry. That's okay. It's cold outside right now. I'm going to bend the barrel of the gun a little bit so I can actually get the drumstick kind of resting in there, okay? There it is. Got it. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull my hand back a little bit towards me and I'm going to push the stick forward so that the tip rests on the practice pad, okay? Now, what I want to do next is I want to find the spot of the drumstick called the balance point where the drumstick is going to rebound the best for me. Notice how I'm just pushing back, uh, pushing down on the back of the drumstick here because if I'm too far forward, it's not going to happen. If I'm way too far back, I'm not going to get very much rebound. So you find that sweet spot of the drumstick where it wants to rebound for you. Mm, haven't found it yet. There it is. Okay. So it's a pretty good, pretty good spot right around there. You'll know every drumstick has one. It just takes a little bit of a few seconds to search for it. Now I'm going to take my thumb and secure the stick in my hand, but I'm not going to push down with the edge of my thumb. I'm just going to simply rest my thumb on top above the index finger. So now what I want to do is I want to lift my hand up like this. Okay. Now I want the back of the stick to hit me in the pad, or the soft pad of my hand here, because that's also known as the shock absorber. Okay. And the shock absorber is great because when I'm, start, when I'm starting to hit the drums really hard, all the energy and shock that's going through the stick, I don't want it to hit anywhere else but in the softest part of my hand. So that's a good place for the back of the stick to hit us, not here, right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is take my back fingers and I'm going to gently wrap them around the stick like this. I'm not going to clench the stick, okay? I'm just going to secure the stick in my hand. So oddly enough, it's a pretty loose grip, but tight enough that the stick's not going to go flying out of my hands, okay? So it's a problem that I haven't dealt with in a long time since I actually learned how to hold the sticks properly after 10 years of doing it wrong. So at this point, you know, you look around, you can see there's a gap here. I don't want to close off that gap because that's too tight. I want to keep it quite open and relaxed. I should be able to actually take a drumstick and shove it right through there if I, that's how I play. So that is, that's huge. You guys got to know that. And if it feels kind of awkward at first, it's okay because the thing is, it feels very loose and relaxed in our hand, but that is the real secret to great technique is the world's best drummers know what I'm talking about because you now have the fluidity and the freedom for the stick to do way more work and our hands aren't doing so much the work the drumstick is doing the work so when i say that i held the stick wrong for 10 years it was because i was clenching it like a baseball bat or like a golf club i really had to relax it so you can see how the the back of the stick is hitting me in the shock absorber you know the fingers are there if i need them so there's lots of freedom so that's a big one how to hold the stick grab the other stick match it up, you can go through the whole process again, match it up, away you go, it's how you hold the sticks. So now that you know how to hold the sticks, the next thing I want to talk about is playing from the wrists. And the reason this is so important is I see so many drummers, even that have been playing for a few years, that are playing like this. And I always say it's like the Energizer Bunny kind of look, and he just, it, it doesn't work, okay? Because we're not robots, we're not machines, we're humans. We have lots of flexibility in our limbs, especially in our arms. So 
I just, you know, I, I try to practice like this just for fun, and I can't. I can't go longer than 15 seconds because that's just way too much work from the elbow. So if I was to play, whether it's my favorite drum beats or drum rudiments or just moving around the set, just having some fun, I want to play from the wrists because the wrists are the motors of drumming, okay? And I'm isolating the wrist. Very little bit of energy is being used. So if I'm just going to play single stroke rolls, from the wrist. Imagine doing this. Like that just is going to get so tiring so quickly. So if I'm just playing from the wrists, I can be very relaxed. Let the sticks do the work. Let the drum head or the pad do the work. You know, when people say to me, man, you can go forever. You can film DVDs. You can do recording sessions. You can do rehearsals for hours and hours on end. And I say, you know, my body doesn't get tired. If anything, I might get mentally tired because, you know, I'm tired of thinking about stuff. But I never get tired from drumming. And that's because of isolating the wrists and just making everything feel very relaxed and doing as least amount of work as possible. So playing from the wrists is very important. You can practice all your rudiments, you know, your flams, singles, paradiddles, moving around the drum set, playing beats. Play from the wrist, guys, and all it simply is, is just that. There's no other real secret to that. Learn to play from the wrist. Even if you play with your thumbnails up, fine. Try to get the wrist moving. If you play palms down, go from the wrist, but try to get away from this if you can. The next thing I want to talk about is something called a medium full stroke roll. Um, also known as a half stroke roll for some people. Uh, the medium full stroke is a 45 degree angle to the drum, okay? So you're gonna get a medium volume. You're playing not fully up like this and you're not down close to the pad. You're playing about a 45 degree angle. Now whether you play with French grip, okay? Whether you play with Germanic grip, American grip, it doesn't matter. Traditional grip, doesn't matter. But the main thing is to try to keep your stick heights as consistent as possible. You know, and you can practice a single stroke roll by focusing on the tips of the sticks. Make sure they're coming back to, you know, the same, the same point that they left. You know, you don't want to do this. You know, try to keep it really consistent. And what I end up doing is I sort of draw an invisible line, or if I can reference something on the floor in front of me through my peripheral vision, I try to think, okay, can I keep those on the same, keep the, the tips of the sticks coming back to the same spot? That's good, because now I'm able to get, you know, a roll with more volume. You know, it ends up being a really great workout for you guys because you're bringing the sticks up, you know, a good 45 degree angle to the drum. So practice your medium full stroke rolls, you know, I said also known as a half stroke roll, and uh, you'll be amazed at how much quicker you can get around the drums with more volume. Okay, so let's now talk about rebounding double strokes. Uh, majority of young drummers, and I say young meaning someone who's just started playing, uh, when we learn the double stroke roll, you learn right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. But most people, even with their wrists, can't even go. I practice that a lot just so I could do rolls on a floor tom, but I also play hand percussion, which is all wrists. So my wrists are pretty developed. But if we want to get really, really great uh, fast double stroke rolls, we have to learn to start rebounding the stick, okay? So as I mentioned in the section on how to hold the sticks, um, you want to make sure you've got that balance point where the stick is going to rebound for you, okay? So the biggest thing is when I drop the stick down, I don't want to be too tight because if I'm too tight, the stick just dies. And I don't want to be too loose because the stick is going to sort of flop around like a fish out of water. So I have to learn to control the drumstick. So when I do drop the stick, it gives me one extra note following. 
Notice that. Once again, can't be too tight, can't be too loose. So you got to find that real nice happy grip. <laughs> we'll call it the happy grip, okay, in each hand to learn to start rebounding the stick. And don't be afraid. I see people kind of going, like, try not to play that second note. Trust your instinct. You'll be amazed. It's like a basketball. Throw a basketball down and leave your hand flat. What happens? It bounces again. You know, you, you grab the ball, it stops. Don't grab the ball, don't grab the stick. You know, just let it bounce. Let it be natural. The way I demonstrate this is look what the stick wants to do. I mean, it wants to keep going. If I'm in that proper balance point, it's going to bounce until it stops. If I get it out of there after two and learn to control that in my grip, look at my arms. One, 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 one. But I'm getting two strokes, right? So I'm thinking right, left, right, left, right, left. But in turn, I'm getting double, 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 double. So it takes a little bit of practice, but you'll be amazed at how quickly this comes. I see most of my students get this in about 10 minutes. But then the goal is to try to speed it up. So once you gain control, I'm simply speeding up my wrists, a little bit arms, not too much. And it's going to be real nice for some real nice open rolls. So that's a huge bonus is to be able to, to rebound that double stroke roll. Uh, keep in mind this won't work on loose floor toms or drums that have sort of soggy feeling heads. Uh, that's a wrist stroke. We've got to play a wrist stroke. But for anything that's bouncy like a hi-hat or cymbals, snare drums, practice pads, that is how you rebound a double stroke roll. So now that you have a better understanding of all these techniques we've been talking about, I want to show you one last great exercise that I like to use for myself and for all my students at home. And it's simply just practicing single stroke rolls to double stroke rolls. Because the concept is similar, but there is a difference. Okay, So let me demonstrate and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so if you, any of you noticed, you may have noticed that my wrists weren't really changing between the singles and the doubles. And I was allowing those singles to rebound into a double when I played the double stroke roll. So let me kind of break this down for you. It's a little tricky to do it too slow because I don't want to lose the rhythm, but watch this. Now, because I'm going slow, I have to kind of help out that second note for the double a bit. But as I go a little faster, the rebound is just going to take over. A little quicker. And I remember when I first learned this, I thought, wow, what a cool concept, because now I am mixing between the single stroke roll and the double stroke roll. But I also liked how it sounded. And there was some really neat things that I could start doing around the drums, exploring stuff on the snare drum, of course, and even going to some of my tighter toms, like the, the small tom and the little eight inch tom and any other concert toms that I had and things like that to use this concept. Uh, cool stuff on the hi-hat too. I started playing like thicka, 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 thicka. And it just started getting my drumming really exciting for me. It was uh, quite cool, some of the stuff that I was able to pull off. But be patient with that because, you know, and you don't want to do it too slow. I tell my students, don't go too slow because here's the thing. If you go tap, 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 
tap, tap, tap, tap. And I always say it's really hard to get a controlled rebound in time that slow. So try to find a tempo that's going to work for you that's going to start to help you with this with this technique because even if it's a little sloppy at first that's fine but you don't want to spend too much time on something that's slow that's meant to be fast you know i say you never want to push yourself but you never want to stay at the back of the race for too long because you're never going to get to that finish line um anytime sooner than you're hoping for so that's another great exercise so practice that one guys and uh you'll see exactly how much fun that can be around the drums so thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate that. My name is Mike Michalko. I'm the author of The Drumming System. And you can click on the link below to find out exactly what The Drumming System is. It's a lesson packed full of everything you may possibly want to learn on the drums. If you want to see my face on your TV at home all the time, we can hang out and talk drums from now till eternity. See you soon.